just a second here. Do you want to press the button? Just rub it. And Let's it's a green button. one. It's a green, green one. one. All right. Let's go in three, two, one, go. It's not. <laughs> oh, it's not. <laughs> there we go. Ah, that <laughs> close enough. <laughs> All right. So yeah, Tomb Raider three. Um, I've played this once before uh, last year on the second stream, and now I get the honor to play it again, even though the time is a little bit early. <laughs> And I'm a little bit tired, but well, you gotta do it, right? Yes. You gotta do it for the good cause. So hopefully this doesn't go too bad. Practice was okay. <laughs> Anyways, uh, in this game. Bad thing? <laughs> <laughs> so this first level is really short here because I can just glitch into this door, and right behind it is the end of the level. And in general, in this game, I will be utilizing corners to a very large extent. You will see this right after this jump here. In general, the game just always puts you on top of a corner if you go into a corner, and that helps us a lot. So that's what I do here. And that makes us go fast. <laughs> so Katara. Yes, that's me. You've recently picked up one of these classic Tomb Raiders. What do you mean? I already ran one before. Uh, oh shit. Well, that that's... Was uh, <laughs> unfortunate. We'll just pretend that didn't happen. Good. It's only one minute. Yeah, sure, <laughs> that's fine. Let's just start again. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think... Okay, I actually would be lying if I said that never happened before, but you know, whatever. Um, That's what you get when you talk about me running yeah, classics. I sh I sh yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, well, well, yeah. Bad idea. Uh, whatever. <laughs> these uh, these rocks, they're very dangerous. They're actually one of the preferred death traps in the first uh, couple Tomb Raider games. They have them pretty much everywhere. And it's kind of funny because they don't actually insta-kill you if you're walking or like moving in general but oh oh no this could be interesting later uh, <laughs> <laughs> i kind of think i know what you're yeah at. uh but yeah if you're kind of standing still they instantly kill you and uh, that's kind of what happened there all right so i already explained this corner <laughs> here and wow oh god oh god oh god <laughs> bit of a mess. But I'm gonna warm up to this. Once I get over the tiredness, it's gonna be alright. Uh, it's fine, I'm the one who comes after this, so take your time. Yes. I will be the one who has to suffer for it. Alright, this is how it should have gone. And now everything will be alright. Okay, so this is the uh, second level. Temple Ruins or like we like to call it uh, the Temple of Ruined Runs. Uh, it is a very long level, about 10, minute lo 10 minutes long, and it's very early in the game, and it's not that cool to run because it's not a lot of cool tricks. So a lot of people think it's pretty boring, but after this it gets a lot better. I promise. <laughs> Otherwise this game wouldn't be here. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure what I should talk about right now. Well, how about some more general stuff, like, for example, movement. What's the fastest way oh to yeah. get around? So, this Tomb Raider game is the first one that actually has a sprint mechanic. Uh, I will utilize that one whenever I can, because that is fast. It's possible way to traverse. Is that the word? Yeah. yeah. And then after that you have sp uh, jump, so like for this short distance here, sprinting is not exactly viable. So I, oops. so I jump. That is the fastest uh, method of uh, traveling in the first two Tomb Raider games. And yeah, that's how you go fast on like a straight stretch. Uh, here I kill this monkey there, even though he is like completely non-threatening and can barely do any damage. And this monkey. Because I'm setting up a glitch 
in a couple of seconds and I need to kill all active objects for that which is basically just enemies so those two monkeys need to die for the <laughs> sake of speed and yeah underwater unfortunately there is no real speed tech so you just swim normally uh, I wonder what else is there that I could be talking about movement wise uh, <laughs> blanking right now. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I hope uh, everyone behind me <laughs> is still awake. <laughs> oh, I nearly messed that one up. I think at least two people are. Okay, that's good. That's more <laughs> than I expected, to be honest. <laughs> that's probably two more than there will be when I will be running. <coughs> oh, no. Oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> Why does always something happen when uh, I am talking? Nice. Yeah, this uh, oh, just don't talking. worry about it. <laughs> I hope I can get this backup jump. It's actually not that easy. Oh man, this is <laughs> this is a great start. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! There we go. No one saw anything. I just saw a great jumping sequence. Exactly. Oh yeah, uh, for the sprint mechanic, it might be relevant to mention that you can only sprint, or start a sprint, uh, if your sprint uh, meter is completely full. So, uh, it's unlike Tomb Raider 4, where you can just sprint at will, as long as it's not completely empty. Yeah. Which, um, means that I need to actually uh, like plan my spr sprints in a way that um, sometimes I don't want to fully exhaust it, but let it regenerate by doing a rolling sprint jump or other, other jumps so that I have it in time to start another sprint. This here is one of those rolling uh, sprints, sprint rolls, yeah, that's the word, that you can sometimes utilize to get some good speed because you can't actually sprint upstairs, you can only sprint downstairs. So if you sprint up a little step, uh, the sprint would cancel. Alright, so here there's two more monkeys. And those are the last monkeys that need to die for the sake of speed. Then I drop a flare on that pretty specific square. I like that rhyme. <laughs> and after I put that key into this keyhole here, I will glitch into the corner right of me and that will uh, trigger a, f what is it called? Trigger flip map something. <laughs> I can't remember the correct word right now. Essentially, the next room that I will go to uh, will be manipulated by me because I did that and I can progress in the game faster. Like there's a little pool with water and if I didn't do that, there would be no water in it. And you will see why I need the water. So the monkeys definitely died for a good cause. Yes, good. and here's the water. And this switch here on the left is impossible to pull unless there's water in here. That makes sense. It not, <laughs> not really like physics wise but yeah that's just how that one works and then I get the second key that I need for the door to be able to progress further <laughs> in the temple of ruined runs which is very accurate so far <laughs> here are the monkeys and so this statue woke up earlier it's called the Shifa and there will be a couple more of this. Luckily this one I can ignore. I just run away. Alright, so now after this there is a very precise roll corner bug where you need a 45 degree angle. Luckily I can use a setup and I hope it's gonna work. So if you crouch and turn once, that's exactly 45 degrees, and then this should work. There we go. So that's a very nice way to sometimes set up tricks, because it's always the same angle. So 
Oh, this is, by the way, uh, a flare cancel. Sometimes when you fall from high enough up, down, <laughs> Lara is supposed to uh, stumble, but if you have a flare in your hand already and throw it away at the same time that you land or like slightly before it, she just doesn't stumble. Also, I ignore that door. It's, that's supposed to be like that. So these Shivas here, I need to kill because they drop two swords that I need to be able to open the next door. And what I do here is I trigger both of them at the same time and fight them at the same time, which is gonna save me some time, hopefully. And if I get really lucky here, they're both gonna drop the sword that I need on the same, uh, on the same tile, so I don't need to pick it up twice. This might actually work. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I'm gonna double check this. Uh, did actually work, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's sometimes hard to see with the corpses. And even though they look identical, I need to use this one for the left one, not the other one. If I use the other one, she would just say no. 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 I can make her say that voice line later. It's a really good voice line. So here I do another flare cancel like before. I'm gonna do those a lot. That's why I actually pick up flares, because um, the stumble animation takes about two seconds. Oh, that's <laughs> that she sometimes does that. Takes about two seconds and um, yeah, so you save two seconds for every flare where you, if you can use it. And picking up a flare pack takes like, I don't know, three or four seconds. Don't know the exact numbers there, don't quote me on that. How many flares are in a flare pack? Is I think it's thing? ten in this game. Okay. It's a bit more than in the other ones. So this room is pretty dark. I need to pull two switches here. Luckily I know exactly where they are. And I get out. Then we meet the man with a big appetite. <laughs> He's very hungry. Literally a hole in the stomach. Yes. So I woke up another Shiva statue. You can uh, hear the, the walking sound and screen shaking. Uh, luckily, it is pretty slow. And if I do this all correctly here, it won't be able to catch me and not be able to kill me. So I can just ignore it. I need one more key here. It's in the middle at the water there. But because there's a current down here, I need to get these two switches and then pick up the key. Don't ask me how there's a current down here, <laughs> even though it's like a closed room. Uh, it's a mystery. Ancient technology. Like, I'm getting pulled to the left here, but like there's nothing that could pull me. Besides those spikes, of course. And now it's gone. I can just swim here. Alright, uh, next up will be uh, the River Ganges. This is all in India, by the way, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the River Ganges. And that level is actually really cool. It used to be a level where you had to drive a quad bike. But then... Uh, we found some cool strats that made it possible for us to just uh, swim in the river, even though you're not supposed to. I think most people are not too sad about not having to drive the quad bike. Yes, it is uh, pretty cool. It was to the left there for just a second you saw it. But it is also very risky and very slow. So in this river, you're not supposed to get out essentially. And these piranhas are supposed to kill you as well. I actually can't take too much damage here. You need to be a bit careful. But there is one corner where I can just glitch into it, like I do so often in this game, and get out of the river. And then with some cool jumps, uh, I can finish the game. I'm gonna make a save here. I should probably also start saving more in general, so we don't have that thing happening again. And here... Ah, okay, that didn't work. I hope it's gonna work on the next one. There we go. And then another kind of cool jump here. <laughs> and then we're out of the river. <laughs> so 
to the left up top there, you're supposed to go with the quad bike. Uh, but walking up there is slow again, so we'll do another corner here. Now this is where I would be with the quad bike. And then I would I'm supposed to jump across the river there. But Lara Lara can't jump that far. Like not that far. So we need to do a bit of a cool setup here. This is extremely precise, that's why we have like a completely planned out setup. And then you can just about make that jump. I did heal. Yeah, okay, I did heal. I need to make sure so they don't die at the end here. Uh, and yeah, that is a river gang, that's pretty much. There's uh, just one more drop coming up here. You can just barely survive that if you have full health. And then we get to the first boss level. Uh, this is a uh, caves of uh, Kia Jala or something. And boss levels are really short in this game. They usually only have like one real enemy. And they drop one of these four crystals that I'm supposed to get in this game. Like meteor meteorite shards. And the meteorite shards give uh, enemies magical powers. So you will very quickly notice what kind of cool powers they get. Once I get to the boss room. I don't need these flares because in a little bit I will actually lose all my weapons, including my flares and medkits. So there would be no point in picking them up. Okay, so here's the boss room. I'm gonna make another save file here because sometimes you get unlucky. And now comes the magic, <laughs> and it's all fire. Oh, well, okay, I'm gonna reload this. I feel this might go bad. <laughs> Get the magic again. So I pick up a rocket launcher here, which is very conveniently placed. A couple extra rockets. Well, that was close. And then... With three rockets I can kill him. And then he drops that shard that he had and I can just pick it up. And that's the first chapter done. And then I go to Nevada. And we switch outfits. Speaking of outfits, I would have switched outfits too. But we didn't raise enough money. But I paid for it. <laughs> you did. So it was not my fault. Was it five dollars? Ten, hello. Ooh, wow, okay. <laughs> it's double the amount. Alright, I need to be a bit quick here so these birds don't fuck up my corner glitch. That was close. Alright. Uh, speaking of donation incentives, um, <laughs> how is the other one going? <laughs> if there is someone still awake. <laughs> so you're talking about the one where you get a haircut maybe? Yes. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Yeah, we are trying to raise an incentive for Edgar to have his haircut live on stream right after this run. And we've already gotten a few donations in for that. Yeah. So Go yeah. ahead if you want to read some. Cool. Okay, we have $20 from Anonymous saying, this goes towards the haircut. It, it's needed for a good cause. Good luck with the run. And sorry, heard you are attached to it, but now it's going away. <laughs> Not yeah. yet. Ten dollars oh. from Anonymous saying the hair must go. Let's get this done, Chad. Five dollars from Jesse Snipe N L saying, can we donate to not cut Eidgott's hair? Pon Uko. Another ten dollars from Anonymous, without a comment. Uh, another ten dollars from another Anonymous saying, I have a very important message for everyone. This boy needs a haircut and he needs your help to reach his goal. Please aid me at, on this mission, Bible Thump. Thank you, Chad. Less than three. Ten dollars from Pato saying, oh. I am not asleep yet. 
Also, lose that hair. Hey, Six, $678 to go. I'm pretty sure it's much lower than that. I'll get to that in a second. Also, lastly, $10 from Smooth oper Operative saying, sending energy to the early morning crew. Keep up the great work. I'd got wake clap emoji. Up clap emoji. And can we get a donation incentive to save that hair? Less than three. Uh, speaking of donation incentive to save that hair, <laughs> my original plan was to have a d bid war for save or cut the hair, but a certain person <laughs> thought it might be a better idea to just have a donation goal. We are right now <laughs> $638 away from reaching that goal, so if you want to see the haircut live on stream, then better get those donations in. Alright. Uh, so while uh, we had some donations there, uh, I did the detonator skip, and now I'm hopefully gonna get to the end of the level here. Uh, you're supposed to jump across this fence with a quad bike, but you can just grab the fence, and then you trigger the ending. And, well, yeah, you see the cutscene doesn't really fit there. Anyways, uh, we jumped into a high security area there, and that's why uh, we well, were transferred into prison. But of course, in prison, if you jump on your like window uh, ledge or whatever, they open your cell and try to get you out. So I instantly escaped, and then I just run <laughs> into another cell where I can push some blocks to escape from the prison. I'm surprised that you have experience with how to get out of prison. Well, I mean, I did play this game a little bit. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> okay, good. And to get back to the hair, uh, yeah, I think... Uh <laughs> Bitwar might have been better because there would have been a chance of it not getting cut off. <laughs> but, you know, maybe people don't spend enough money. So yeah, in this level, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you lose all your weapons, all your medkits, flares, everything. And... That is why I didn't pick up any additional stuff, really. And here you can do some cool movement to get down here. And because I don't have any uh, weapons or anything, and I need to get some key cards for some doors, and the key cards only get dropped by people that I need to kill, uh, you need to find creative ways to kill this guy here with the pistol. And Originally, we did that with the prison guards here, uh, with the prisoners here, I mean. They would just beat him up and then you could pick it up. But you can also use doors to kill people. So I save and load here and I do it again. And then this guy that's currently running in the door is gonna fall over dead. <laughs> and just drops the key card, which looks very much like a newspaper. Uh, yeah. That was a dramatic death. <laughs> yeah, it's essentially um, when you s uh, lo load the game, the game thinks that all doors are closed for like one frame. And if something is in a door, which they're not supposed to be in, they get damage. And if you do that twice, it's just enough damage to kill him. Okay, so we progress further through this high security compound. There's a neat jump here. And then in a little bit, I will activate Zombie Lara, uh, in which I will just kill her, but she just doesn't die because she gets healed at the same time. And that actually stops uh, all kinds of music in the game. Uh, doesn't allow you to go into the menu anymore. Luckily, you can still heal by using hotkeys and stuff or your weapons with other hotkeys, but you can't save or load anymore. So uh, I'm gonna make a save file right before this, just in case something goes wrong. <coughs> so these uh, ventilators insta-kill you, pretty much. There's a safe crystal right behind, which heals me. And if you paid attention, close attention to the health bar, you saw it going to zero and then getting healed. So now I'm dead, but not really. Here, I'm gonna try to get the correct angle. Mm, come on. 
this is a bit precise and I don't wanna fuck it up. Okay. Uh, this is not great. So there's a trigger in that corner that I need to skip. And if I go too far to the right, I hit the trigger and that makes me lose more time later on. Uh, if I go just far enough to the left, I can actually buck into that corner and skip this whole letter here. But there's a middle ground where I don't hit the trigger, but still don't get the other thing. And I hope I did get that, because otherwise I might have a problem. Since, well, as I mentioned before, I can't save and load. <laughs> so I hope that's fine. I actually fucked that up at GSM, if you remember. <laughs> Please don't repeat it. Yeah, I hope so. So here, I can skip another letter, hopefully. Yeah, skip that one. Uh, yeah, letters are boring. They take very long. Donations? Yeah, please. Uh, donations has been really popping up oh in the past <laughs> few minutes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, we have a $200 donation oh, from no. Wupa. <laughs> With the comment, cut that hair <laughs> in all caps. We have $20 from Tara saying, let's hope the speed is not in the hair. <laughs> $5 from Eurenstein saying, here are five bucks to save the hair. Good luck on the run. And we have $10 from Men's No Hair Club saying, oh, no. <laughs> saying, I hate hair so much, so it must be cut. $10 from Morris saying, haircut present. How do you... Uh, how do you about your haircut? Where is the scissors? Uh, I well, I told people to get some if they really wanted to get cut. So I hope someone got <laughs> some scissors. Oh, okay. That 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 was a yes there somewhere. Uh, okay. Well. Uh, so how much is missing now? <laughs> do you really really want to know? Uh, yeah, kind of. Two hundred and sixty-three. Oh no. <laughs> I maybe I need to go faster. So <laughs> I also, thank you all for your donation. <laughs> of course. It's all for a good cause. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, you saw me kill that one guy for another key card thingy with the prisoners because there were no doors close by. And here, I'm not supposed to get to the bottom of this tower. But you can use this corner here to just not die, barely. And we can progress further. Okay, so in a little bit I'm gonna get my weapons back. And this level is also gonna end soon-ish. Also, um, because I didn't die here, that means that I didn't fuck up the corner. So that's great, by the way. Because <laughs> you guys have less time to donate. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, yeah, since I'm not gonna lose all my equipment ever again, I can now start picking up everything that I need for the rest of the game. So that includes those flares, some medkits that I need to heal, and for safety, and weapons. And one of the coolest weapons in the game that I will be getting in this level is the Desert Eagle. And it's probably the strongest one besides the grenade launcher, but the grenade launcher is very imprecise because it's a projectile. And the Desert Eagle I will be using for the rest of the game for every bigger enemy, essentially. And the final boss as well. So here there's a glass wall. But it's not there and then it's there. That's because of, uh, well, skipping triggers, essentially. Like, the game doesn't load uh, correctly all the time anymore. So here, on the right, you see my pistols, but I ignore them. And this is the Desert Eagle plus some ammo. I don't pick up the pistols because I don't need it for the rest of the level and at the start of the next level I automatically get them because the game just assumes I would pick them up, of course. So that's all good. Okay, and you hear this guy walking. He's all the way at the top. And he has the last key card I need to finish the level. And we get up there with corners, of course. I have the better gun. <laughs> oh god. Alright, so that's the yellow key card. And then we're nearly done. 
I think it's worth, worth mentioning that this uh, game doesn't quite follow a linear path like some of the great yes. um, games afterwards. <laughs> um, so technically, you would not have had to lose all your weapons right at this point. You could have also done that later on, right? Yes. Uh, so India is always the first level. You have no choice there. But after that, you have three uh, like continents or levels or whatever to choose from, which is uh, Nevada, that I'm playing right now, uh, South Pacific, and uh, London. Yeah, that's the last one. And I picked this one first because of the route. Um, we discovered some strats for a level in the Pacific. And for that level, we need to do London right before it. So uh, that's why we do this order. I will explain that a bit further later. So now we're in the Area 51. Uh, the high secret super high security something area in America and if you've ever wondered what there might be in area 51 this is definitely where you're gonna learn about it and if we have any more messages this might also be a good time because there's not that much happening right now <laughs> or not uh, here there's a guy that will activate a laser pad if I don't kill him fast enough. So I use the Desert Eagle here and I need to be kind of fast. Got him. If I don't get him I'm actually uh, very screwed. This guy here, uh, he's not very smart. Because of the way the game is programmed he can't follow me on the square because it's gonna go away. <laughs> So <laughs> he can't even touch me. Okay, now we get to the part why I don't like this level very much. There's crawling spaces with guards right in front of them. And it takes too long to kill them or I don't have the ammo for it. So I'm saving here just in case because sometimes you s get stuck on him. Ah, okay, that worked fine. And if you get stuck on him, you are essentially dead. This is some more uh, Desert Eagle ammo I need. And we continue. And around this corner here, there's uh, some lasers that you might be able to notice. They trigger that gun, but if I stand right below the gun, it just stops. So that's fine. High security. Yes. <laughs> and here's a lot more people. I'm gonna save here again just in case something goes wrong because I don't have the time to kill any of these and that is fine all right okay so there's one cool and big skip coming up in this level it's called the launch skip there's a rocket in this uh, facility and usually you have to launch it first to be able to progress past it. It's that yellow rocket here. And we need to get all the way to the top. And how do you get to the top? I assume it will involve a corner. Or at least one. That is correct. Good. Also I do something called flickering here. Um, it's essentially falling and getting put up again at the same time. And it moves you along the wall here. Then I go up a little bit and then it moves me into that corner. And then in that corner I will have to turn around and do something similar again <laughs> what to get to the end of the level. <laughs> so here we turn around. And after a bit of adjusting I will hopefully slide along this wall in just a second. I'm doing this a bit carefully because I do it too far. There we go. And then we turn around. Do a bit more. And now we're all the way at the top. Nice. So yeah, that's the launch skip. And if you're a big fan of those flickers, <laughs> don't be disappointed. Those are not the last ones. I think they also were not the first ones, right? You also did the meta detonator skip. Uh, yes. Okay. It's not quite the same, but kind of, yeah. yeah. Hey. 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 
That's, by the way, the only two voice lines they have. Hey and ah. So I, I mean kill it's these sufficient, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I kill these guys because I need the CD. It's actually, uh, yeah, it's the item that get m gets me into the final object, which I'm not gonna uh, spoil yet. And so I continue further here, and then in a little bit there's uh, coming up a door skip. So doors in this game are actually very hard to get past. Like you can get through all kinds of walls and corners, but doors are usually pretty solid. But this is one of the special doors we can skip, but it's not easy. So I need a special setup for this. We start here in the corner. Do a certain number of steps, and jumps, and then I make a save file just in case this goes wrong. And then we do some more setup magic. Oh, mm. that, uh, that's unlucky. I don't want to fall down there. Hopefully it goes better this time. Okay, this should be better. So I'm gonna make a save file here real quick. It's very pleasant on the eyes. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> In the meantime, I ready for some raw donations. Oh. That's fine, I can fix it. I have my safe file, I forgot to heal. Just continue talking yep, so we don't get the donations and you can keep your hair. Please just keep going. So, you ready? Yep. Okay, cool. We have $100 from uh, Defarting uh, Ninja. Oh, come on. <laughs> With the comment. Coming from the tech station, letting oh. you know that this man needs a haircut. For the kid's sake, of course. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> We have $10 from Anonymous saying, get a haircut, hippie, and good luck <laughs> with the run. Wow. $20 from Anonymous saying, save the children and cut his hair off. P.S. Homie Post says hi. Oh, Another hey, Another $5 from Don Anonymous saying, uh, with no comment. Another $5 from Anonymous saying, if you can find a good hairdresser nearby, can we at least choose what hairdo I'd got gets? Then we also have $163 donation from Cherry Rice saying haircuts for charity are the best kind of haircuts. And finally, $5 from Perry saying six speed run, donating towards your incentive. Good luck. Um, should I even ask? <laughs> like, I have a feeling this was a lot of yeah. dollars. We need $85. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Thank you all for your donations. Time to find some new strats on the fly. Yeah, mm. <laughs> I don't think so. So this level uh, here is completely glitch free, by the way. <laughs> this is uh, not developer intended, but you can just get to the end of the level in like 40 seconds. So that was that. And, oh yeah, we're in London now, by the way. In London, Lara changes outfit again. <laughs> now we have a, like, I don't know, swim cat suit or something. Uh, yeah, reminds me a lot of Catwoman. And this level used to be very long and, well not very long, but kind of long and very boring. Because uh, essentially we had to walk uh, in a couple spots multiple times. But not too long ago we found something really cool. And hopefully it will all work out. And you will enjoy it when you see it. So I make a save file here. And then we continue on for now. And here's a dog. Dogs in this game, by the way, are very scary. That's why I keep jumping here. If I would walk, there's actually a chance that he can insta-kill me. I'm, I'm not kidding. Dogs can sometimes hit you multiple times per frame. <laughs> then you just die. <laughs> okay, so there's two rats here that I kind of need to kill so I can do the trick. And around this corner is a... Like this uh, turnstile or something, I think is the word, mm. which you can't get through unless you do some stuff. 
in the game, but I can just do like this crouching here, make another save file, not on the one that I did before, then I load the other one again, well, for the first time, slide down here, then I load the one that I just did, and then Lara will do this uh, sliding state here, and then with some turning, I can get through. So that uh, skips a lot of that level. And now we just walk to the end. And in case you were wondering about the somewhat glitchy menu, I think we might still be in for a surprise at some point. Yeah, there's a, a Tomb Raider 3 exclusive glitch that it doesn't exist in any of the other Tomb Raider games. It's called the uh, texture glitch. And it's actually one of my favorite glitches in this game, even though it, like, it doesn't actually help. Sometimes it makes you slower. But it's essentially that if um, during a loading screen you skip it too fast, kind of, um, the game doesn't load the textures properly anymore. So it just picks random textures that it has available or, or assigns different values to it or something. So uh, stuff can get screwed up quite a bit. But we haven't seen too much of that yet. So that's the end of the level. I like to just, you know, play that a little longer there. And now these guys that tried to kill us earlier are our friends. Oh, well, it's not ideal, but it should be fine. Alright, well, we'll just make a safe file here. Okay, so you're not supposed to get across this thing here, but you can do a, a pretty precise jump, so you can just barely get over it. And then we go further. <sighs> and then we actually get to the only vehicle nowadays with that we still use in this uh, game, because it's the only cool one. It's the UPV, I think? Underwater propulsion vehicle or something? This thing here. And it makes you go fast underwater. And it also makes you not die too quickly from not having air. But you can also just get air by going into this, uh, you know, roof here. So right now I'm, I'm totally fine on air. There's crocodiles in uh, London, by the way, if you didn't know. Okay, so this level is not the most exciting. It's just a couple of switches that I need to uh, get in order. But the ending is still gonna be worth it, trust me. So if you notice there, the thing doesn't make sound anymore now. There's a reason for that. I'm also not losing air anymore, which is also great. So I don't need to do the whole going into roofs anymore. So that makes this whole part a lot more convenient. And at the end, uh, will do even more. I will see that in a bit. So, Katarif, yes. which one is your favorite Tomb Raider game? Well, the one I will be running after this, of course. <laughs> and anyone who has played it obviously shares that opinion. Yes, Angel <laughs> of Darkness, the objectively best game in the series. Yes. Which is so well programmed that even a casual player through, it's impossible to soft lock or not load any textures. As you found out recently again. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so for you, I highly assume it is this one. Yeah, uh, this one and Tomb Raider 2. I um, always wanted to learn Tomb Raider 2 as well actually, but uh, sometimes you just never find the time for it. So I keep doing this uh, sound turning off glitch every time I get on it, because I need to redo it. There's a lot of divers here. <laughs> Sorry about the sound. <laughs> and that was the last switch. And now we get back up where there's air. But because um, the way that this vehicle works and the glitch that I do where I get off it, but not really, uh, the game doesn't quite know I'm in water anymore. So it behaves like it would still be in water, 
you can still see my air bar in the top right as well. Obviously, it doesn't it's not necessary anymore since I'm at the actual air. But it makes the ending of the game a lot, uh, a lot of, uh, this level a lot easier. Okay, so the next level is another boss level. It's called City, and we fight Sophia, I think. Female enemy for once. Uh, and she has another one of those crystals. And essentially she's uh, invulnerable, so she's way stronger than the one we already fought in the jungle. But she's not completely invulnerable. She's only invulnerable to our weapons. So what I do there is I uh, use her damage aura, if you get close to her you get damaged, to get pushed into the corner, to get ahead of her. Like this is a kind of a climbing race that we're doing here. And then I shoot this power generator and it sets uh, electricity to the floor and then she dies. Although I don't die on it for some reason, I'm not sure how that works. Croft Technologies. Alright, so uh, next up is the South Pacific. Here it's important that in this first part I only go straight. I don't press any keys but the swimming key until I get to this corner. And uh, that is relevant for the second next level, yeah. Called Madubo George, or Georgie. <laughs> uh, where we'll be using a kayak. Which is actually the second vehicle we'll be using, and I was lying earlier. Sorry about that. I completely forgot that that counts. And we have a like very neat uh, setup for the kayak, where I just read a text file. That's also on my screen. You can't see that, but Cataraf can. Yeah. I mean, what do you mean? Obviously, you know this by heart. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's only like 50-something inputs. <laughs> Who wouldn't remember that by heart? I didn't get that. Uh, but yeah, that's why I do that. There's a lot more information on the internet about it. If you just go to YouTube and search, uh, I think it's called Madubu Hell or Hell Setup or something. I can't remember quite anymore. By Tails Gaming, which is, by the way, the world record holder of this game. Uh, another German dude who's really good at Tomb Raider 3 and made the speedrun a lot quicker. Also, if you save load here, the spikes are gone. And yeah. I think his uh, time is like a 1 hour 5 minutes and 50-ish seconds. Unless of course he got in a world record in the last days and I didn't know about it, but I don't think so. And he's actually the one that discovered that Madubu thingy that I will be doing later. So that's really cool. Oh yeah, let's uh, get back to this first here. Um, this is a uh, village and here's another flicker. So I need to get <laughs> into a tree house here. And the one of the fastest ways to get up there is uh, this flicker here. <laughs> it's not that funny. Come on, guys. <laughs> so yeah, that's my treehouse with this guy that doesn't have a leg anymore because there's actually uh, cannibals everywhere. And now we get out of the treehouse. So this is a quicksand essentially, and you can only <laughs> uh, traverse on some of these platforms. Uh, the other ones are not solid. So only the ones that I will be jumping on are actually good platforms. And then we'll get to meet the thing that can't be missed in any classic Tomb Raider game. Dinosaurs. Look at this little raptor. So Anniversary is a classic Tomb Raider game then? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's okay. a remake of a classic, <laughs> so I guess. Y you get half a point for that. Thank you. Um, and in this level, there's like this uh, crash plane. That's why the level is called Crash Side. And the plane has a gun in its back that you're supposed to get access to to eventually kill this, well, destroy this wall right in front of me here. But, of course, there is uh, better ways to get past that without having to do that. If you did have to do it the normal way, uh, you would have to actually kill it. Well, you don't have to, but you kind of have to, because otherwise the T-Rex will kill you. So you would see a T-Rex. 
So if this is now correct, yeah, I get through here, and that's the end of that level. And now we get to Madubo Georgie. And we start right away with a bit of a long jump that you're not quite supposed to make. And this uh, white water will... Don't grab that, Lara. Uh, will instantly kill you if you touch it, so I gotta be very careful here, and that's why I also made a safe file right away. And yeah, I don't know, if there's some more donations, maybe? Are you sure you want to hear that? I mean, <laughs> at this point I just accepted it, I think. Well, I have some bad news, actually. <laughs> First of all, we have $100 oh. from Kiosk. <laughs> Put right. the comment, save the children, cut the hair. Well, I guess that settles that then. Yep. $85 from Metaniel saying, the hair goes. <laughs> all right. $20 from Harper saying, this is for that Mafia game earlier. Oh, Get wrecked, no. I got. <laughs> we have $50 from I got's hair <laughs> saying, $50 to counter the haircut. Save me and the children. We have $5 from European Shavers Assembly saying, Hello, I am with the other ESA, the European Shavers Assembly, and I'm very excited to see that you're planning to get rid of someone's hair, so I've decided to donate to honor that. However, funds here at the European Shavers Assembly are low, so I can only spare $5. All these shavers do not come cheap. And finally, $5 from Lily saying, Your hair is beautiful. I'm gonna miss it. Are you gonna let it grow again after this? Thank you uh, all for your donations. I need to really focus right now. I will answer in just a second. Oh no, fuck, I need to reload. Uh, so yeah, this is the setup and I've screwed up on paddling, so the whole thing is gone. Uh, we'll do it again though, because it saves so much time. Uh, I will probably let it grow back, yes. And I will respond to the rest after this. In the meantime, while you're doing that, I will quickly shout out one of our partners. Sigma IT Counseling has been partnering ESA for multiple years, and they love gaming and making a difference. Supporting ESA was a no-brainer as it combines all the core, core, core values of Sigma, all for a better tomorrow. That's <laughs> it, finally. Uh, yeah, so that's like 50 something uh, pedals that I need to do in an exactly precise order without any time in between. And then I get to this spot where I can get just get out of the kayak. <coughs> and then the hard part is not over yet. I need to get some jumps here. Uh, this one in particular is kind of hard. I hope that I can do it from here at all. Yeah, there we go. And then we'll get actually back to the intended route. So this is where I'm supposed to be. And then we go to the thing where I can uh, hit the switch to open the end of the level. Okay. Uh, now I kind of already forgot what some of the donations were about. <laughs> I do remember the <laughs> European uh, Shave Assembly. Yes. <laughs> so uh, thank you for supporting uh, shaving, I guess. It's not going to be a shave, though. I am... Sorry about that noise. I'm definitely not going bald. Uh, I don't think that would look very good. But we'll cut off a lot. I mean, people donated a lot of money, so you guys deserve it. So these jumps here are all a bit, little bit risky. 
because uh, once again the water just kills you. And then I get back into my kayak here. And I do some more precise inputs. This time it's only like 7-ish though. And yeah, don't even mind those spikes, they don't, you know, that's fine. So that uh, thingy that I was pulling earlier opened up this big hole here. It's essentially like a giant plug that I removed, like in your drain or something. And now I can get down here. And in this pool here, there's three crocodiles, and that's why I picked up a lot of medkits earlier, because I don't have the time to kill them. And hopefully they don't kill me. Now I need to get out of the pool. Uh, yeah, that can happen. That's not good. Okay, it's fine. And that's sure. the end of that level. Oh, I've seen way weirder <laughs> than that, trust me. Okay, so this is the boss level of uh, Pacific. And this boss has once again one of these Metroid shards and he has also a lot of superpowers. For example, the ability to one-shot me. So, um, I gotta be a bit careful there. And after a couple more traps here, I will get to him. Also, he's like pretty cool because he just sits in a chair and attacks you. He's like not even bothered enough by you to get up. Also, don't ask why these uh, spinning wheels keep going forever. That totally makes sense. Um. What's the what's the plan with cutting off the hair, by the way? Do we do it afterwards? Do you want to do it in the run? After. After, okay. Oh, during intermission. Yeah, sure, we can do that. That's probably less messy then as well. Okay, uh, so this giant rock there, uh, well, ball, don't worry about it, it's not going to do anything. <sighs> and yeah, then we get to the boss. Right. So I'm going to make a save up before this boss, because as I said, he can one-shot you. And it's a little bit tricky timing-wise. And he's dead. Alright. He's also invulnerable in the time that he doesn't attack you. So that's why you saw that little barrier there. And yeah, that's him dead. Alright. So now we go to the last part of the game. It's uh, Antarctis. And yeah, that's where our game will end. It's very cold in here, and if you go into the water in Antarctus, in the top left you see a bar, and if that goes to zero, you actually take health damage, even though you still have air to breathe. But, because, um, I mean, I assume because of laziness, uh, the programmers of this game only save, well, all other things in the save file, but not how warm Lara is, essentially, which this kind of bar represents. You can just make a save file and load it, to fully reset that bar because it just doesn't have any information in the save file about it. So the top left bar is going to be filled again now. So that's what I do in these water sections um, to well go a lot faster. And yeah, way before we actually started using save files for these runs, we did uh, single segment runs in which well saving and loading is obviously not allowed. And just on the top, uh, just 
besides the fact that obviously uh, you couldn't do these cool tricks that make it a lot easier, you also uh, had to finish a run without saving and loading, which is very hard, as you've already seen me fail a lot of things. And that made running this game really hard. I think on the original leaderboards, when it was still single segment, it was like three people before me. <sighs> so yeah, not a lot of people that finish single segment runs of this game. Right, I hope I get this right away. No. Now I need to get out of the water again. There we go. You can also see that this is not how Alara's new outfit is supposed to look like. There should be no black. The pants should all be one color. The top should all be one orange. Um, this is the texture glitch that I mentioned earlier. It's a very mild form of it. Uh, if anyone has ever watched my stream and me running this game, you've probably seen very extreme versions of this before. Uh, it can go as far as that like everything is just black. And yeah. Or Lara has like blonde hair actually in one of them sometimes. Oh, it can get really weird. Or the walls have the textures of passports. Oh yes. Uh, <laughs> Because, like, a lot of the loading screens take place in the menu. It just takes random textures from the menu. So it, sometimes it's just a passport. Or the map. Like, you can have the sky that looks like the map. Okay, that took a little bit long. This is essentially the same thing that I did in Temple Ruins here, just to open that door. But since there were no enemies, I didn't have to kill anyone. So that makes it a lot easier. And anyway, this is a... RX Tech Mines. It's a very long level. And. Uh, well, you can also make a lot of mistakes in it, so I hope it goes good. And now, because we're underground and we're getting closer to the end of the level, uh, you will see some creatures that mm, are not quite as normal anymore. That was a fuck up. That's why I saved her. Uh, camera, okay. There we go. So, these guys, the white guys with the flamethrower, are actually on my side. And they kill mutated uh, scientists or something, the guys in the red on the ground. But because they don't care about me and there's a friendly fire in this game, uh, I can get set on fire. That's why I had to reload there. So yeah, these are mines. There's a lot of mine cards uh, that I need to use to just get around in the level, but we can skip a couple of them. Not this one, though. No. So, after Cataref's run, who's gonna go with to breakfast with us? <laughs> Everyone? <laughs> That assumes that I will finish a run of Angel of Darkness. I mean, that it's is very risky. It's gonna end in <laughs> some <laughs> okay. form or another. Point taken. And I just said at the end. <laughs> okay, so there's a bit of platforming here. It looks pretty neat. And then there's uh, a dive bug. A dive bug, like in this game, as you've already seen, there's fall damage and it's actually quite substantial. It limits you quite a bit. But you can avoid fall damage with what we call a dive bug. And hopefully the setup was correctly. You make a dive and then you hit a wall and the ground at the same frame or the same time. And then you don't get damage. You can actually do that, I think, in all of the classic Tomb Raiders. Just, well, where you can dive, actually. Yeah, never mind. You can't dive in Tomb Raider 1. My bad. So, in 2 onwards. Um, but there's actually, uh, unfortunately, not that many good options to use it in this game. So, this is the only one. Also, these guys poison you. So, I would slowly die. So, I need to heal here. 
And this is one of the two, no, three, three items I need for the end of the game, uh, end of the level. And that's the main reason why I need to do all of this. Oh no. Please don't poison me or anything. Okay. <laughs> well, this is awkward. Oh no. <laughs> I'm not used to this. There we go. Uh, what I was gonna say, yeah, the items, exactly. So there's like one door we need to get through, but like I mentioned earlier, doors are really hard to get through in this game, and trust me, people have tried. If we could get through that door and to that door, uh, then we wouldn't have to pick all of these up and the level would be a lot shorter. But because we do have to get all the items to get there, um, uh, this level takes very long. Also, these drills are supposed to kill you, but if you jump to the left there a couple of times in the right spot, they, they don't really do that much damage. So there's a lot more climbing. I don't know, if you have more messages or comments, please, this is a good time. We have gotten a few more donations in, actually. We have $20 from Chapaya Vian saying, Hiya, I got good luck with the run. The best Tomb Raider game is Tomb Raider 2. Here's one PAL version, because we can do the flare wall bug whenever we want. Something you PC Master Race scrubs can do. Wow. Love you long time. And we have $5 from Potov saying, I demand boldness. Oh no. <laughs> and lastly, we have $5 from Perry asking, if you raise another 1,000, does it mean we can sh we can save the hair? Uh, well, no, that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Can we do that? I would like to do that. Can we? <laughs> Thank you all for your donations, though. 43k by the end of the run. $600. So $600. Well, um, okay. Uh, please. <laughs> Better take your time now. Donate $600 in the next 13-ish uh, minutes. And if you want to save this hair. <laughs> Although my hopes are not very high, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, this is the longest flick in the game. Um, there's like this hole that we need to get across to get back to where we came from in the fastest way possible. And this is uh, one of the best ways to do that. So we just watch her do that. So the intended way would use the minecart? Yeah. And I'm not actually sure where it goes. <laughs> I don't remember. It goes somewhere on the right there. There we are. But, uh, yeah. This might look slow, but it's still faster. Alright, so, uh, luckily that noise is gone because those drills are pretty annoying. And we progress further into the mines. This flare is not for any stumble cancels. It's literally just to get light because it would be pitch black down here. And I might know this game very well, but uh, even in complete darkness, I am lost. And yeah, I guess. Uh, I want to give a big shout out uh, to all the Tomb Raider runners out there and the Tomb Raider community and any kind of Tomb Raider fans that like to watch the games because uh, you guys are awesome and I've seen a lot of you people donate, <laughs> which I'm not sure how I should take <laughs> that, <laughs> but thank you anyways.
And oh yeah, also big shout out to uh, the German restream where, uh, I mean, I'm actually not 100% sure, but he wanted to do it, where Darren is doing a German commentary of this run. And I hope he stayed up or woke <laughs> up for this run. <laughs> Uh, the delay was not my fault. <laughs> Can I make one quick word here? Yeah. Okay, so we did make we did make the incentive incentive for uh, shaving the hair. So cutting or cutting the cutting Wait, the hair, not, not completely shaving, cutting the hair. What I'm are we sorry. doing? I didn't agree. Even I get confused at this <laughs> time of day. Uh, but if we reach 43k, if we get 600, we're not gonna turn it back. We are gonna cut the hair regardless Aww. because. Aww. It was the incentive, and it is mad. Right, I just enough. wanted to say that really quickly. That that is a fair point. But donate anyway. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you should donate anyways. Yeah, like. I mean, it's all for a good cause, and the motivation shouldn't be to get someone's haircut. <laughs> not anymore. Yeah, not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, these were some more mutated zombies. Well, not zombies, mutated scientists, my bad. This is an interesting corner where you can just walk through. And this is another one of these uh, corner bucks. That's pretty precise, so I need a 45 degree angle here. That was too much. There we go. And more flickering, yes. <laughs> this is a high speed one. <laughs> and once I get to the apex of this wall, I can drop down without dying, which is here. And then we get back to the start of the level. And because I have this bar here now, I can get the last piece that I need, which is the battery. That I will need to power a crane. And I need to do one more minecart ride. And as I promised earlier, I will play Lara's famous no voice line in just a second. It's worth it, trust me. It actually cost me like half a second. <laughs> in before half a second overestimate. I mean, you wouldn't be able to notice if it's half a second or a full second. <laughs> I mean, we also started late with the split, right? Uh, because we used the wrong button. Yes. And there was like, for some reason, one and a half minutes on the counter when I started. Yeah, that was weird. No. <laughs> <laughs> Told you, it's worth it. So now I uh, powered and activated the crane. Which is for this uh, submarine here, but um, we don't actually use it. Like you're supposed to use it to not die to f freezing to death. But as I said earlier, we have this powerful saving mechanic. And then there's only two more levels. Uh, Lost City of Tinos is next. And since I don't need any more medkits, I can just use them there to skip uh, saving and loading. What is so funny? <laughs> yeah, because she got healed. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh yeah, now the texture glitch gets a little worse. Now her pants are more black. Okay, so Lost City of Tinos. First, we gotta get into this corner here. 
then we do a very quick flicker if I get it. Oh. Mm. Unlucky. I think she's also wearing a ski mask now or something. Yeah. I told you, the game gets wonky. Yeah, she, uh, yeah, she's a bit colored now. Come on. There we go. Mm. Oh, I'll be pretty close with the estimate, but I'm gonna blame this one and a half extra minutes that was there for some reason. Yeah. We have time for one quick donation. Yes. We have twenty dollars from Halfen saying, "I'm saving that glorious hair." <laughs> I like that spirit. Thank you. Thank you for the donation. And sorry, we are not saving the hair. Uh. What was that? I didn't quite hear it. Oh, well, yeah, with enough money, eventually. <laughs> okay, so here's a puzzle. But you just press the right switches. And then uh, the coolest trick of this level. This level used to be very long. Uh, but because of these uh, flare trigger thingies that we have. Uh, I can make this a very short level. So I get a flare on the square. And I make a save file. Just in case. Then I drop it. And then I need to get this jump here. Which is actually not that easy. Uh... I was pressing the walk button, but apparently she decided that I wasn't. No. Uh, yeah, so she's supposed to stop at the ledge there. That's better. Alright, that's good. And now I just need to get into this corner here before the flare runs out. And that's it. And all of that um, allows me to finish the level early, because at the very end there's going to be a very bright beam, and it's supposed to be a bright beam of death. But because I just did the stuff that I did, it's not going to kill me anymore, and I can just finish the game, uh, finish the level. Why do I keep saying game? Well, soon it will be the same. Yeah, on the next level it's going to be yeah. true. So this uh, beam there is harmless now. And we get to the last level. And I hope uh, we have no people that are afraid of spiders here, because uh, this is a giant spider. <laughs> it's essentially a human person fused with some kind of spider, because he got all these crystals. Like we collected him for, uh, collected them for him, and then he stole them from us. And he turned himself into this gigantic spider. And he's powered by that meteor that you can see in the middle floating. And so I need to get the crystals first to l make him lose. <laughs> Stop making fun of Lara, okay? She's alright. Uh, so that he loses all his power. And like after I got all four of them, he will not be invulnerable anymore. And then I can kill him with 10 more shots. It takes exactly 10 shots per phase. <laughs> and after this, one more. So now the meteor is going down. Right, just saving here real quick, because I can still die on this level. And yeah, because this is a uh, Tomb Raider, it's kind of tradition that after killing the final boss you still have to escape. So this is not quite over yet. We need to get out first. But... It's not much longer, but I'm afraid they can't finish it in one minute. I think the Tomb Raider 2 ending is actually one of my favorites in that regard, because you kill the final boss, then everything collapses, you need to run out. And then you're at home and like, oh, I, I got my, uh, my dagger. 
I'm finally happy. And then the bad guys come anyways. And then you need <laughs> to I'm kill all to of kill them. kill a few people, yes. Uh, <laughs> collect 20 people. And then I go into the shower. Oh yeah, then she goes into the shower. You're not allowed to see that though. So yeah, now I'm above this uh, crater. I need to do some platforming here. Without dying. So I'm a little careful here. And now we're outside. So there's only one more trick, which I have a setup for, sponsored by Tails Gaming again. And then we're done. So uh, if you want, you can get ready on that button, Katara. So I'm making a safer here because there's a lot of enemies. And I need to do one more corner bug. Which is a bit precise, so I have the setup here. I got it. That skips like waiting for the helicopter to arrive. And when I get in this door, we have time. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I mean, that's that's underestimate, right? Yeah, that counts. That one and a half. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> the start wasn't very great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I blame the, the, the time. It's uh, yeah. six and a half in the morning now. Yeah. But yeah, um, thank you everyone for donating, <laughs> even though uh, that means that my hair will be a lot shorter the next uh, month, years. Um, uh, thank you for everyone watching, supporting, and everyone here, because it is six and a half in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so thank you for that, and I guess we'll just do the intermission and haircut uh, now. So uh, yeah, if you donated for that, you should stick around for a couple <laughs> more minutes. <laughs> All right, that's uh, it for now. Thank you.